every time we chant the five themes for daily recollection. I'm struck by the contrast between that chant and the one that follows it, May I Be Happy. The themes for recollection are not happy things. We're subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to separation. And even the principle of karma, which is what the Buddha offers as hope in our practice, still sounds pretty onerous. You slip up and you're going to suffer. And then we chant, may I be happy. That contrast right there says a lot about life. We live in a world where there's a lot of suffering, in addition to the basic suffering that comes from having a body. There are also the, all the horrible things that people do to each other. Killing, stealing, cheating, abusing in one way or another. And yet in the midst of all this, we want happiness. It's this desire for happiness that underlies the whole pr practice. Coupled with an understanding of karma, Without that understanding, we just the desire for happiness becomes sentimental, it becomes rather unrealistic sometimes. But as the principle of karma says, if you act with skillful intentions, the results will be happy. The results will be pleasant. This means we have to act with skillful intentions, intentions that don't want to cause harm. It's that desire not to cause harm, and the realization that we have to implement it through the principle of karma. That's the beginning of the practice. It's the motivation and the understanding. This is the beginning of the what sometimes they call wisdom and compassion, more appropriately called, called discernment and goodwill, that underlies the practice, that starts us out. That's why we chant these things every day. And for most of us, our desire for happiness in a world where there is a lot of suffering many times leads us to harden ourselves. We've suffered from this person, that person, this kind of thing, that kind of thing. We harden ourselves both inside and out, hoping that that's a way to get out of suffering. But it doesn't work that way. The more you harden yourself, the more insensitive you get to your actions. And it's through your actions that you can hope to, that's your only hope for getting out of this predicament we're in. So one of the first steps in the practice is to begin to soften yourself up from the inside. Not only with thoughts of goodwill, but also showing goodwill for yourself. And you start with a very immediate way, the way you breathe. Allow yourself to breathe comfortably. Think of the breath not only as the air coming in and out of the lungs, but also the whole energy flow in your body. Can you detect any part in the body where things feel depleted, like they're lacking in energy? Like any cells that would like a good deep breath to reach all the way down to them. Well, you can breathe that way. No one's stopping you, no one's preventing you. Just remind yourself of the possibility to open up and try to be as sensitive as possible to how the energy flow in your body feels. Sometimes we harden ourselves to this, which makes it hard to follow the breath, makes it hard to stay in the body, constantly running out, running away. Some people have suffered so much in life that they can't even find their bodies. They close their eyes and there doesn't seem to be any body there. They've shut everything off inside. But with patience, as you learn to get in touch with your breath, learn to be more skillful of the breath, allow yourself to open up inside. Get over the fear that you're just going to open yourself to more suffering. You find that the breath becomes a strengthening quality. In addition to being a pleasant place to say, it gives you more and more energy. And as that energy gets more consistent, you can allow it to fill the whole body. 
and as that energy fills the body, impressions from outside like make less, less and less and less of an imprint, less of an impact on you. It's almost as if you set up this energy field that repels the negative energies that come from you, come at you from outside. So in this opening up inside, this softening up inside, allowing yourself to be more sensitive, paradoxically makes you stronger. If you're consistent, if you're really devoted to following through. We're developing qualities of the mind here. We're not looking for little insights that we can wrap up and take home. We're looking for skills, and this is the beginning skill, getting more and more sensitive to how the breath feels. It requires alertness, it requires mindfulness. And as these qualities get developed, those are the qualities you take home. Those are the qualities you put into use at all times. So it's bound to be a certain repetitive part to the practice. We keep coming back to the same issues over and over and over again. To strengthen that quality, the consistency of that quality of your goodwill for yourself, your alertness, your mindfulness. All the qualities you want to develop in the mind. So it's not just doing it once or twice and saying, well, that's enough for today. You do it again and again and again. You try to learn how to maintain these qualities, keep them going. It's through the maintenance that they build up a, a momentum. The Buddha has an image of a river flowing down from a mountain. And he says if you open water courses off the river and on either side, then the current gets dissipated, gets weak, can't build up into anything strong. But if you close off the water courses, that keeps the current focused and it builds up a momentum. The further it goes down the hillside, the stronger it gets. And it's the same with this quality of consistency in your practice. Once you learn to be sensitive to the breath, in touch with the breath, allow it to expand through the body. If you find any, any little pieces of tension or tightness any place in the body, any sense of blockage, allow it to, the breath to move in there seep through those places of blockage, open things up, and then maintain that quality of openness. Maintain it through the in-breath, maintain it through the out-breath, and then the next one, and then the next one. And in the maintenance, it, de it develops momentum. It develops strength. It becomes a new habit in the mind. And then you learn how to maintain that openness in other situations as well. You find that in <clears throat> situations where you're afraid or anxious, you tend to tense up again and you've got to realize, okay, the openness of the breath does not open you to bad outside influences. It actually protects you, fills your body with an energy that doesn't allow bad influences from outside to come in. So in your inner sensitivity, you gain strength. You have to learn how to trust the practice. Of course, you're going to test it before you can build that trust, but allow yourself to test it to begin with. And the more you test it in different situations, the more you find that it really does work. And this allows you to explore <clears throat> this quality of inner sensitivity even further. Because once you've got these qualities more and more established, you can start asking or continuing to ask the question of where you're causing yourself suffering that you don't have to. You can ask it with more finesse, with more precision, greater sensitivity. So you get into more subtle levels of stress that you cause for yourself, or subtle levels of action in the mind. The Buddha's teaching is basically a challenge. He says, how far can you pursue this question of not harming yourself, not harming others, being sensitive to what you're doing, and learning how to stop doing anything that's causing unnecessary stress. That's his challenge. Just keep following it through. We often think of the Buddhist teachings as an interesting body of thought, an interesting philosophy of life, an interesting mode of practice. But he meant them to be more than just interesting. He meant them to be challenges. 
saying if you follow this all the way through, it takes you to the total end of suffering. It takes you even beyond space and time, total limitlessness. That's quite a possibility. You turn around and you look at your life. Are you living a life that's pursuing that possibility, or are you closing yourself off to it? Doesn't that challenge pique your curiosity? Is this possible? And then you look at yourself again. What reasons would you have for not wanting to explore this possibility? That you can learn to end all the habits that cause stress and suffering in your life. When you take the teachings as a challenge, that's how you're responding to them appropriately. That's how you get the most use out of them. And even if you don't go all the way, you find that the more you do pursue them, the less and less suffering you're causing for yourself and others. So even if you don't make it all the way to the end of suffering in this lifetime, you've made a definite improvement in your life. And you've turned your life in a direction that will keep yourself pointed in that way. Keep your mind pointed in that way. And you find yourself with a real sense of accomplishment. Not the sort of accomplishment you can measure in outside terms, but a greater sense of having cleaned out the mess inside, straightened out the unskillfulness inside, opened yourself up inside. Get a better sense of what's already there and what the possibilities are.